Yeah, and we have this first game we're going to talk about right now, Gonzaga-Duke in Las Vegas in Jim's neck of the woods. It's at, what, 1030 Eastern? Very late. Very late indeed, Jim. I guess you can yep. stay up on a Friday night. There's no school tomorrow. Uh, game of the year, Jim. I've said it 100 times already, but this might actually be it. Gonzaga-Duke, another massive spread in favor of the Zags. But I, once again, kind of buy it. Do you think it's way too high? Do you think Duke hangs around? I mean, I think up to nine, that certainly feels high, right? Yeah, it's gotten higher. It's weird. That is that is big if it's eight and a half, nine, wherever you're seeing it. Uh, but Gonzaga has given us no reason to believe that it shouldn't be that high, right? Like they've played two very good teams and wiped both of them out immediately. Like there's never any doubt that they're going to win by 15 plus against UCLA. Same thing against Texas. So what makes Duke different? That's what we're trying to figure out. Well, I would assume Duke enters with a better defensive game plan than Texas did and possibly even better than than UCLA's. Mm -hmm. You have the big bodies to throw at Drew Timmy. You've got 10 fouls with true center (laughs) between Theo John and Mark Williams. You can just hurl bodies at him, hopefully not have to double as hard, which opens up the Strouder threes, the the Chet Holmgren drives and threes. Very curious to see how, how, uh, how Duke plays defensively. If they just go full single coverage, like Texas did, they actually have the bodies to work on uh, on him a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I don't know, Kai. I, I I still think Gonzaga just is a different animal right now. Like yep. I, I, the I, I I'm leaning towards Duke with my number, but I'm terrified of fading Gonzaga. I think that's a losing strategy long term. In especially in big games where they are showing up and it's not like a minus thirty five spread they have to cover. Yeah, going back to last year, I think now we're up to around what thirty five games or so regular season games where Gonzaga hasn't played within single digits. uh, I think West Virginia at the beginning of the last year was the only team that got within double digits um, of Gonzaga. That's still the case going into this year. Um, They have been blowing away good teams. The Chet versus Palo matchup is what everyone's going to be talking about. Um, All the NBA draft prognosticators, that's going to be a fun one to watch. Uh, Jim, Zag's guards better than Duke's guards, in my opinion. Um, But... I have no side here either. I, I, it's hard to lay this many points against Duke, a team I think could be number two in the country, but I also don't want to go against Gonzaga. So kind of a stay away from me. Uh, I enjoy think, the game, I think you're, you're covering the game. I will. I'll be there, be in the house. I think your guard point is valid. There, there's very much a groundswell right now. Andrew Nemhard is the best point guard in college basketball. Hmm. Uh, and I, I'm not saying he's not, but it also is easy easier when you have Drew Timmy and Chad Holmgren to play alongside. <laughs> if he had to be the best player on his team – would he be the would he be the best point guard in college basketball? I don't know. Yeah, uh, he, he does he does a great job controlling the game though. He runs the pick and roll perfectly with those guys. Uh, so he he is a star in his role, and you know he's a top twenty five player in college basketball. That, that's yeah. he's at least that. He's been awesome, and this game will be awesome. 